Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to take measurements from a Navisworks model. But before we do that, we're going to go back to a little bit of geometry theory and understand how Navisworks uh, uses axes in order to take measurements. So just as a review, in 3D there are three axes. There's the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. In Navisworks, um, we're, when we look down in plan view at the model, uh, we're looking at the XY plane. So when we're looking down at a Navisworks model, the Y axis is actually the north and south dimensions. And if we want an east and west dimension, we'd be using the X axis and any height information or elevation information would be along the z-axis. So with that in mind, let's jump back into Navisworks and learn how to take some measurements. And then before we start measuring anything, what we want to do is make sure our measurements are in the right units. So if you go over to the big N button, click it, and then go to Options, um, you're going to have to expand out the word that says interface. Under interface there's display units. If you click that we can change our units from meters to feet and inches. And then angular units are degrees, that's fine. And let's round to the nearest sixteenth. Let's do eighth of an inch. And then click OK. Now our units are set correctly. Let's take a look at these two beams right here. We'll take our first measurement. Uh, we'll, we'll say we want to know from the web of this joist to the web of this joist, uh, what is that distance? So let's take a look at how we do that. If we go over to the Review tab, you'll see the Measurement tool. Go ahead and click down, and we're going to select Point to Point. So now it gives me a, it changes my cursor, and you can see it shows me what plane my cursor is selecting. So we're going to pick we're going to pick the side here and then we're going to pick the side over here. And this is where it comes in handy to know what the different x, y, and z axes mean. So you see the dimension it gives you right away. Um, it says it's 13 feet and 6.043 inches. Well obviously that's not right. That's the straight diagonal from the point we chose to the other point we chose. That's not what we want. We want the distance between the two beams. And since we're looking north, um, the, the dimension we wanted to just take was east and west. So that would be the x-axis if you remember from our diagram. So that's what we have here in red. So it's showing from this point straight across to the other object that we selected is actually 8 feet, 4.1 inches. Um, and it also gives you the Y distance, so, and then the Z distance. So you have to be careful. You can't, you can't just assume that the dimension it gives you in orange is correct. In fact, most, most of the time it isn't what you want. So just to illustrate that, let me navigate a little bit differently. So you can see obviously the orange is not the distance you wanted. Alright, so the next measurement we might like to take is maybe we'd like to know how high something is. So we're going to zoom into this duct work and we want to know how much space is between the top of the ceiling and the bottom of this duct. So again we're going to go to the measure tool. We're going to do point to point and we're going to select the bottom of the duct and the top of the ceiling and again you get all three measurements well four we don't want the diagonal but this time we want the Z axis which is in blue and so we can see it's one foot 7.7 .7 inches alright so the last dimension we might like to pull is maybe we want to know how far this duct is from the wall so now that's going to be a north-south dimension. So again, point to point, we'll hit the wall. 
and the side of this duct. And again, it gives us 11.5 if you look at the orange, but we don't want the orange. We want to know the y-axis. So if we zoom out a little, you can see more clearly what just happened. So the true distance is 11 feet 2.1 inches. All right, in addition to the point to point measurement tool, there's one other tool that is useful. So if we go up to our measurement pad, uh, tool selection again, um, there's all sorts of different tools you can use. You can measure angles. Uh, we can accumulate uh, many dimensions, so it'll let you pull a bunch of them here. Okay. When you're done, you can hit the clear command. You can do a point to point, so a couple different places. If you want to test from one single point, you can also make a line of dimensions if you'd like. Uh, you can also pull an area. So the area that we've just selected is roughly 48.934 square feet. And we're going to go ahead and clear. Okay, the last part of this tool that I'm going to teach is that it's really nice to be able to use the X, Y, and Z axes when we're measuring and the building happens to be oriented north and south, east and west, um, orthographically, like the top portion of this building. It's easy to pull dimensions in there. But if we go to the angled portion of the building, um, it does not make it easy to pull dimensions here. For example, if we pull a dimension between these two beams, these two beams, if we, if we face north, they're running at a, a roughly a 45 degree angle. So if I grab my measurement tool and I pick this webbing and go to this webbing, and then if I navigate out, show you what it just did. If I orient north, you can see it's pulling east to west. Distance is 9. Or it's pulling a north-south dimension of 2 feet. And you can see the diagonal's not exactly perpendicular to this beam, so I can't trust this dimension. So when we're at an angle like this, it's really hard to get a good dimension with just the basic tools. So what you need to do is learn what the lock uh, icon does. So what we're going to do, again, we're going to clear the measurements. We're going to hit the point-to-point -point tool. And this time we're going to hit a lock. And we're going to pick. We don't want to lock it along the x, y, or z axis. But instead, we want to lock it perpendicular to the first object. So we're going to hit perpendicular lock. And we're going to pick the surface. Uh, to which we want to be perpendicular. So if I click here and then start my measurement, it only lets me go exactly perpendicular from that object. So I can select the beam all the way over here and it's still going to pull a straight line perpendicular to that first location. So now we know the true distance between these beams is 10 feet 0 0.045 inches. And if I navigate up, you can see what that did. Again, if we go back to north, you can see it forced it to be perpendicular. So the perpendicular lock tool will be one of your best friends. You can also lock it parallel if you want to make sure um, you stay parallel to this beam. I can, I can select all the way to the floor, but if we navigate you'll see it stays right in line with the edge of that beam. 
so it will always be parallel to this plane. Uh, likewise, uh, you saw in the lock command, if we go back to our measurement tool, you can also lock, for instance, in the z-axis. So if we wanted to measure the floor up to the duct over here, you can see it's pulling a straight line. So it's that the bottom of that duct is exactly 16.199 inches above. That way you don't get all the other four the other three dimensions that you have to worry about. If you just lock it, it will constrain your dimension to just one axis. All right, and that's about all you need to know in order to take measurements in Navisworks.